Hey everybody, it's Kevin DeWall from Pro Lego here to talk to you again about Enterprise AGI. And today we're going to talk about the hottest new career field ever created, and that's prompt engineering. So if you spend any time on social media around the topic of our large language models, you're bound to run into the, the topic of prompt engineering. And there's some claims out there that it's going to be this emerging new career field, that people it's going to have complex skills that people are going to have to learn. Uh, I don't currently agree with those claims. However, as always, I'm open to evidence the contrary. So uh, prompt engineering is a fancy term for writing the inputs into a large language model like GPT-4 to get the outputs that you want. And that could be the right answer, the right formatting. There's, there's lots of different forms it can take. Uh, unfortunately, people talk about this as if it's a a hard engineering skill or even a, a hard business skill like learning how to do complex financial functions in Microsoft Excel. And I don't think it's anything like that. Um, so um, the, what I see uh, related to this problem is, is two distinct domains. Um, so the first one is prompt engineering as it relates to application and system design. And that means building a scalable application using OpenAI's API um, to build a particular solution to solve a business problem. In that case, this is really freaking hard. In fact, it's so hard that we don't even know how to do it yet because it's all so new. It involves lots of different domain-specific trade-offs about interface design in terms of how you're going to send information into a large language model and get information out of it, and whether that's going to be done through other language models or traditional programming APIs and interfaces. It's also around cost optimization because sending large bits of information back and forth to OpenAI's API can get really expensive, and so there's going to be trade-offs between retraining the model for a particular domain versus running doing prompt engineering to get what what you want or maybe even develop doing development locally on a local language model since you're not trying to do development in QA back and forth to uh, open eyes language model it also involves data compression to figure out can I compress the prompts into a particular format that allows me to minimize latency and increase speed and on and on and on and so I'm not trying to throw a bunch of go gobbledygook techno babble at you All I'm just saying is that building a system that handles this is really freaking hard and we don't know how to do it. And so I wouldn't even call that prompt engineering. If that's the problem you're trying to solve, you just need good system design and you good, need good creative engineers that can figure out how can I build this kind of, how can I build interfaces into a large language model to be able to solve the, the business problem that I have. Um, the second area that prompt engineering tends to come up is around the usage of ChatGPT as an interface. And this is very much about how do I type in and write instructions to ChatGPT to generate what I want. And again, I don't see this as a hard skill, and there's lots of tips out there that you can read that are somewhat helpful in how to do prompt engineering better. But for the most part, you can figure it out just by practicing and playing around with it. So there are some you know, proven techniques like using examples of the kind of format you want to get. So you want to tell ChatGP, hey, I'm looking for XYZ analysis you know, to extract this information from this document and produce your results in you know, A colon B or something like that. Um, the other one is if you want to try to access more creative elements of the model and to get it to, to work on harder problems, to set up some sort of framework that gets it to work more in more complex, um, through more complex thinking. Like one I like is you are an analyst in a competition, you're trying to come up with the best answer to X, Y, Z, and then you give it to the particular task. And that's gonna force it to be creative. And the final one is just cutting and pasting answers from your first question back into the prompt as a way of refining it. And this is just something you need to practice. Um, so those are the two areas where I think, uh, you know, uh, prompt engineering comes into play. Now, with respect to the latter, I've seen some insane posts on Twitter, which I, I have to be jokes about companies paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for people who can do that sort of interfacing with chat GPT skill, which is absolutely nuts. And if you really do need somebody to do that, to that level of chat GPT engineering, my suggestion is you go to the career fair day at your local community college, you find a journalism or a marketing or a philosophy major, 
and you sit down with that person, explain the business problem you're trying to solve and see if they can do it with GPT-4. Uh, not only will you not spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a, a privileged em a employee with a, coming from a privileged background, you're going to get somebody who's going to be motivated to solve your problem, uh, and you're going to give the young person a great career opportunity. Um, so that's it pretty much in a nutshell. So will prompt engineering become the next great thing? It's possible, but I don't see it right now. I see it breaking down into two areas. The first one is engineering and application design, which is hard and noble. And the second one is just good writing and good problem solving skills that a lot of uh, qualified people can do for you. Anyway, hope it helps. Thanks a lot.